Hello, hello, it's Stumplet here. Here's an item on simplification. Simplify the expression on the screen. Credits to the 2005 Duke University Math Meet for this item. As usual, pause this video if you'd like to give this item a try. But if you're done, let us dive into the solution. So first thing to notice is that there's a lot of nested radicals. And there is a nice way for us to eliminate nested radicals. And one of the more famous techniques is to use the AK. Now the AK, which stands for the Abu Kamir's method of extracting square roots, we're going to use this to uh, mainly evaluate these two. All right. Um, but let's talk about what Abu Kamir states. So Abu Kamir's, uh, Abu Kamir's method of extracting square root tells you that, let's just say I have an example here. Let's just say we have 7 plus for square root of 3. I want to take the square root of this thing. So I want to take the square root of 7 plus 4 square root of 3. The first step is to write in terms of a plus 2 square root of b. So something plus 2 square root of something. So the inside over here, uh, it's not yet in that format. I mean the 7 is okay, but the 4 square root of 3, let's try to make it 2 square root of something. So let's try to talk about the 4 square root of 3 first. So 4 square root of 3, I know that's equal to 2 times 2 times square root of 3. And then, well, I only want one factor of 2 outside the square root. So let's try to put this 2 inside the square root. And that's going to give us um, 2 times square root of 3. And then I will have to square the 2 that I place inside the square root. And then from here, I will get that 2 times the square root of 3 times 2 squared. So I'll have 2 squared of 12. It's kind of weird that we're we're not simplifying things, but this will be a nice tech. Uh, this will be the first step for us to be able to use the Abu Kamir's method. So let's write it. Let's write four square root of three as two square root of twelve, and then we can use Abu Kamir's method. Now Abu Kamir's method tells you that the square root of a number in this format it's going to be square root of x minus sorry plus square root of y. Now, the plus sign is just retained because we have a plus sign here. But if the sign was a minus sign, we would have to use the minus sign. And this is just a personal preference. I like to put, I like to have x greater than y. Because for example, if this plus sign over here was a minus sign, that's gonna make sure that the resulting thing is going to be positive because we know that a square root should be non-negative. So it's just a preference that I, um, it's just my own preference so that I don't get lost here. Anyways, so what's the restriction for, uh, what's the conditions for x and y? So we have to find two numbers, x and y, such that if I add them, it's going to be 7. If I multiply them, it's going to be 12. So x plus y is equal to 7, and xy is equal to 12. Sometimes x and y are easy to find. We can just do a simple trial and error. We realize that the two numbers that will work here is 4 and 3, because 4 plus 3 is 7, and 4 times 3 is 12. So in this case, let's just have the preference that the bigger number goes first, square root of 4 plus square root of 3. And we've successfully uh, eliminated a nested square root. Now obviously we can go further and simplify this one because the square root of 2, sorry, the square root of 4 is 2, so 2 plus square root of 3. And that's going to be the technique that we're going to apply in simplifying these two radicals in the denominator. So let's take a look at uh, the first one on the left side. So square root of 3 minus square root of 8. Now square root of 8, it's not in the 2 square root of b. Now take note, we have to have a plus 2 square root of b, or obviously a minus 2 square root of b. Now in this case, it's going to be the minus case because as you can see here, the sign here is a minus sign. So we have to write it in that format. And luckily for us, we know that square root of 8 is square root of 2 times 4. We can bring one of the, we can bring the 4 out take the square root, so we know that square root of 8 is be this, it's going to be the same as 2 square root of 2. So 3 minus 2 square root of 2 it is. Find two numbers that add up to 3. So two numbers that add up to 3 and two numbers that multiply to 2. Again, simple trial and error tells you it's going to be 2 and 1 because 2 plus 1 is 3 and 2 times 1 is 2. So th the square root of 3 minus 2 square root of 2, it's going to be the square root of the two numbers we have. And then take note, we copy the minus sign. So there we go. And then just write down the two numbers we got. So 2 and 1. 
Now, obviously, we can continue simplifying this to square root of 2 minus 1. And that's going to be the result for the red term. So for the red term, I'm going to write here just for a note, this part is the same as square root 2 minus 1. Now, let's take a look at the second one, the denominator of the second term. Now, it's already in the nice format, either the a plus, square, sorry, a plus 2 square root of b, or the a minus 2 square root of b. In this case, it's the minus because the sign in the middle is a minus sign. So we can talk about, all right, we have to get, we have to find two numbers. We have to find two numbers that add up to 8 and two numbers that multiply to 15. Again, simple trial and error will do here. We realize that 5 and 3 will work, right? So 5 plus 3 is 8 and 5 times 3 is 15. So we know that this part, we can write this as the square root of 5. Again, just a personal preference, write the bigger number, okay? So you don't have uh, mistakes here. And then just take the sign, because it's a minus sign, it's going to be a minus sign here. So we, we have we successfully extracted the two square roots here, so in the, in the denominator. So let me just replace them like this. And let's now deal with the numerator of the first term. So we got this one and this one from Abu Kamir, so that's done. And then let's talk about the blue one. Now, there are two ways to do the blue one. I'll show you both ways. Now, the first method is to let this expression be x. So x is equal to the square root of 3 plus square root of 5 plus the square root of 3 minus square root of 5. All right, so um, a nice technique here is to square both sides because we want to eliminate the square root. And we can, try to we can try to square both sides and solve for x afterwards. So if I try to square both sides here, x squared would be equal to now, this is kind of the same format as a plus b. So I'm going to do uh, a plus b squared, technically. And that's going to be a squared, the, first, the square of the first term, plus 2ab plus b squared. So let's talk about how we do this. So let's talk about the square of the first term. That's just going to be 3 plus square root of 5, just removing the square root. And then plus 2ab, 2, this is the a, and this is the b. And then the plus b squared is just 3 minus square root of 5. All right. Now let's continue this thought here. x squared would be equal to, we can try to simplify stuff here. Take a look at the square root of 5 and the minus square root of 5 here. We can combine the two 3s. That's just going to become 6. And let's talk about the middle term here. Now, since we have 2 times a product of square roots, we know that we can put we can multiply the two terms inside the square root. And that's going to become 3 plus square root 5 times 3 minus square root 5. Now, this is an a plus b times a minus b scenario. And we know that this part can be written as 3 squared minus 5. So just the difference of squares. So 3 squared minus 5, that's equal to 4. So this entire square root will just evaluate to 2. So x squared will be equal to 6 plus 2 times 2, and that's going to tell us that x squared, x squared over here, will equal to uh, 10. Right? Now, if x squared is 10, then x would be equal to, technically, we have two possible square roots, the positive and the negative one, but since for x, we're adding two non-negative numbers because we're adding two square roots, so I'm pretty sure in this case, we're going to ignore the negative case, and we're just going to have square root of 10. All right? That's the first method. Now, for the second method, I'll write it here. So for the second method, it's going to use the Abu Kamir's method again. But we're going to do some bit, a bit of manipulation here. So let's take a look at this one. I'm just going to show you guys the one for the square root of 3 plus square root of 5. So the square root of 3 plus square root of 5. Now, this is impossible to become a plus 2 square root of b because, well, there's no way. So in this case, we have to manipulate the inside. So let's try to make this as 6 plus 2 square root 5 divided by 2, right? Those are equivalent. And then the square root of a fraction is the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. And we can try to use Abu Kamir's in the numerator. And if I use Abu Kamir's in the numerator, this is already in the nice format of a plus 2 square root of b. So, so I just have to find two numbers, apparently, that add up to 6, and then two numbers that multi multiply to 5. That's going to be 5 and 1. We're going to put those two numbers in square roots, 
and copy the sign, right? So it's going to be square root of 5 plus 1 divided by 2. Now we could do something similar for this one, the 3 minus square root of 5 case. And you're going to see that you'll eventually be getting, all right, I'm going to write it down here. Eventually, you should be getting that this part, uh, this part would be equal to square root of 5 minus square root of 1 divided by 2. And we can proceed with the question as follows. Eventually, we'll be able to get that this part, the original, um, the two nested radicals, that's just equal to the square root of 10, right? Now, clearing things up here, apparently for the last step here, it's just going to be rationalizing because uh, we just have typical square roots here. All right, so the first term, we can rationalize it by multiplying square root of 2 plus 1 to the numerator and the denominator. So square root 2 plus 1, and then apparently in the denominator, it becomes 2 minus 1. So the, the denominator here becomes 1, right? The next part, so this term, we're going to get 4 times square root of 5 plus square root 3. The denominator becomes 5 minus 3. And 5 minus 3, that's equal to 2. So I think we can cancel this part and have a 2 here. So, all right, this part becomes 2 square root of 10. Let me write this as 2 square root of 5. Sorry, square root of 20. So square root of 10 times square root of 2, that's square root of 20. And that's 2 square root of 5 and plus a square root 10. And then we subtract 2 square root of 5 minus 2 square root of 3. All right, and now we're done. Just cancel the 2 square root of 5. And we would have our final answer here square root of 10 minus 2 square root of 3. And this is going to give us approximately negative 0.308. And this will be our final answer. Hopefully, get, oh, whoops, um, it's not 308, it's 3018, sorry. But, anyways, so that's going to be the approximation for the answer. Hopefully, you guys learned something new from this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.